crossing the Hudson River. We got one more today, a BMW, early crank no start. I've been promising this guy to come out. He's like, I'll pay you whatever. So we're gonna do it. And it's gonna be a long drive in the night. Get back home. And we'll get there. Last car of the day, of the trip, on the Staten Island Express. We're about two hours north of New York City, and we have a BMW. What a way to end the day. 2009, I think it's a 328. Yep, 328i. Crank no start, and scan it for codes. We have in the engine control module, fuel pump. Okay, electronic fuel pump, not encoded. That's it. <laughs> the owner said he replaced the fuel pump on recommendation from a friend. This thing right here he said didn't help. He also bought a new fuel pump control module. Now these are not just plug and play, they need to be coded sometimes programmed which is not easy here's the fuel pump control module right by the rear seat so easy to get to and the fuel pump power and ground lives right there so we can at least easily check powers and grounds manually energize the pump see what's going on with this thing and go from there so let's do it so first things first, let's make sure power and ground are making it to the fuel pump control module, and they are. Now, let's manually energize the pump uh, so we can jump power to power. Uh, I'm sure the ground is tied in. So just make 100% sure. So that's a constant ground, so all we need to do is jump this power so this power through a fuse, make sure the pump runs. We can try starting the car, see what happens. And then once we make sure that the pump itself is fine, we'll focus on this control module. All right, so I unplugged both connectors from the fuel pump control module. This connector goes to the pump. This connector goes to um, from the fuse box. So through a fuse jumper, the positive is jumped. And I have an ammeter on here. I just want to see what the current of the pump is. We'll focus on that. And once I connect the ground to the ground, we should hear this pump run. Let's see how many amps it draws. Ready? Okay, so watch the ammeter. I'm going to connect the fuel pump. It runs. Six amps. Let's try to start the car. See if it runs. Huh. I think I need a boost pack. Okay, let's try again. Still crank no start. And our fuel pump is definitely running at 4.3 amps. Alright, so got the battery charging from the XL7. Let's enter the EKPS and see if we can do anything with it. Delete fault memory, reset control unit. Activation fuel pump. Let's see if we can activate it. 
We got the ammeter on there. It's not turning on. Still not turning on. Uh, okay, it actually turned on about 8 amps. That's full current. And we'll stop it. Drop to zero. Okay, so the fuel pump module is able to activate. Let's, I don't know, reset the control unit. Did something. Control unit has been reset. Okay. Read fault code. EKPS not encoded. Wonder why that is. If this is the original EKPS, it should be fine. There's the module information. 15. 05 2007 this is a 2009 I wonder if this is the original one I'll have to ask the owner that is the right VIN you can try the other one okay so I swapped the new fuel pump control module in and it does work it, it can energize the pump you can see nine amps on a meter, so stop. Let's try to crank it with this thing. Okay. So back out, scan everything for codes again, see if the same, see now it's, now it seems to be happy. ECM and EKPS are now green, okay, let's try to crank it, see if the fuel pump turns on while cranking. Yes, it does. It did not with the other one. So now, fuel pump is working. We're not getting any codes. Let's move on to what else are we missing? Spark fuel at the engine. Okay, so now we're going to check for spark. Got number one spark plug out. The owner's going to crank it. Okay. Go ahead. Good enough. Then you shut it off. So we have no spark, and the spark plug was not wet with fuel when I got it out. So now we have to see are we missing a power feed to the spark plug coils, or missing control, or what's going on here? So let's just check for codes one more time. Absolutely no trouble codes stored. Interesting. Actuation test. Let's see if we can hear the fuel injectors click. Only one engine running. Only at engine standstill. So clock fuel injector number one. Let's try that. Active. Okay. That seems to work. Let's try number three. So, still two variables. We don't know if we're getting fuel here, and we definitely don't have spark. So let's look up the, the wiring diagram for these uh, ignition coils, just to verify uh, that we're not missing something silly like a blown fuse. Okay, so when I crank it, the test light here. Yeah, test light came on. My test light came on, so that's power feed to this ignition coil. Now why is this test light 
not on. It should be. Let me just double check my connections. Mm, let's see. Alright, so the Tesla is connected to the power and ground at this ignition coil. So whenever the owner cranks it, we should add bright test light. Definitely no spark. Okay, okay, that's fine. Interesting. So power and ground is there. Let's check the signal wire with an oscilloscope. Okay, so I'm gonna crank it. I just wanna see engine speed and the mass airflow. Okay, so we did have engine speed. We have no trouble codes. Our fuel pump is definitely turning on. So we're down to two. Let's hook up a scope to the ignition coil control wire, A. Maybe to an injector, B. We want fuel and spark, and that will be the fork in the road. Also, we want to check that the fuel is getting to the fuel rail. All right, so three channels on the Pico scope. Channel one is the ignition coil control wire. Channel two is fuel injector number one control wire. Channel three is in cylinder on cylinder number one using the 265 PSI transducer. Scope is rolling. Let's just crank it see what happens and this should give us very good direction okay let's crank it and stop all right let's zoom in there's definitely some activity So blue, blue channel is the ignition coil number one control wire. Where is that spark occurring? I don't know what that is. It's, it looks like it's just staying around 12 volts, but we do have some kind of some kind of interference there. The injector is definitely opening on every compression stroke. That's that's good. I just don't know what this ignition coil is trying to do. And peak compression is 135 psi. That's fine. I don't see any spark occurring anywhere close to TDC at all. <laughs> I wonder what this is right here. These ignition coils are not being controlled by the engine computer. How strange is that? So I relocated the channel one to cylinder number three control. I want to see if anything, uh, you know, I want to see a control signal here. Okay. So, really don't know what to say here. We have a no ignition coil control from the computer, no codes, everything else is spot on. Powers, grounds, the fuel injectors are firing, no spark. What are the chances of like the engine computer failing and not controlling these ignition coils? I, I just don't know. Calling a BMW engine computer is not easy. 
So, called up the guru Keith DeFazio and Keith, BMW, no control of the ignition coils, no codes after a valve cover job. He's like, did you check the ground of the coils? I'm like, well, yeah, I did with the test light. He's like, did you check all six? Apparently, if you leave the ground off for the ignition coils, that brown wire, it'll cook all the drivers and the engine computer. Because BMWs are very sensitive to grounds being left off. You remember the one where like five modules were fried? The one that drove from Kansas? Similar situation. So let's, where is this ground location? So the brown wire goes here, here, there is a ground, that's one location, and then there's another one right behind this coil, and da -da -da -da, it is not installed, <laughs> it's just loose, <laughs> it's amazing, oh no, so that's why we were seeing uh, kind of a the computer is trying to fire one, two, three, and then nothing, nothing, nothing. That is just that blows my mind. So, is this one tight? No, it's not. It's loose, and that one is completely disconnected. So, what we can do is reconnect them if we still have. Nothing. Needs an engine computer. Needs to be programmed. The dealer did the valve cover. We have proof that the grounds were left off. And if I was the customer, I would be pissed off and say, hey, you owe me an engine computer. Um, and that's it. So this BMW is diagnosed. Now we just need to see, you know, with the grounds connected, will it work? So indeed, that rear ground completely disconnected so with a test light from battery positive through the bright light to ground we have nothing on the rear three coils and if I touch this to that stud where this is supposed to be yeah now is the nut on there I'm trying to see yeah the nut is there but they never connect reconnected the wire blows my mind so let's ground that out, reconnect everything, do one more crank with the scope, but I doubt this thing is coming back to life. All right, so the ground, the rear one, I just jumped to a good ground. This one I tightened up. Let's see if there's any difference on the scope when we crank the car. Like I thought, no luck, but do we at least have the six, six little noise packets now? So yeah, reconnecting that ground definitely did not change much at all. There is just one event that looks like it might be sparking, so maybe one out of six cylinders is trying <laughs> trying to fire but this is not unfortunately not good news so we'll do an update if the owner uh, he said he's gonna get it fixed and eat the eat the cost but if I was the customer and I had proof that the dealer caused the damage um, I would not let this go very easily so that's it for tonight. I hope you enjoyed that diagnosis. Thanks to Keith for pointing us in the right direction. That's it. Fried engine computer. Thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.